goose must as well be good for Uganda. We are here, Madam Speaker. The Honorable MP for Mazabuka knows very well how many members of parliament have been, I don't know if I should call it, poached. We had one health-looking former De Minister of Defense, member of parliament for Kasama Central, who was very happy with, to be with the PF. Who we don't know how he was convinced and what they've done to him now. I don't, it doesn't look the way we had him. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, my point of order. And to remind you not to debate people who are unable to defend themselves. If Your they, point of order, Minister. They should just learn to democratically accept the loss and move on. And move on. Yeah. We were there, Madam Speaker, on your left. So the point of order, Honorable Minister. The point of order is, is the Honorable MP for Mazabuka in the first place in order to veer off from the speech, which is very clear in black and white, and start creating his own imaginary speeches, which the President didn't deliver in this House. Secondly, is in order to debate people who can't come here and get challenged or even defend themselves. I seek your serious ruling. My ruling, um, honorable members of the House, is first to remind the House that the whole essence of debate is to put your views across and the other side to either rebut or agree. The honorable member for Mazabuka is putting his views across. The honorable members on my right, the executive, should take these views as material for their debate when their time comes to respond. And for the information of the House, arising from the many complaints we have received, we have ensured that there is ample time for the executive to debate and respond to the issues being raised by the left, or indeed, the right at the back. That is my ruling. In addition, in order for as many members as possible to debate, we must try not to interrupt those that are on the floor debating. Let us allow the smooth flow of debate. If there is any deviation from the rules of the House, that is why I am here. That is why I am here. With that guidance, the Honorable Member for Mazabuka Central will continue with his debate, and I urge the Honorable Members on my right to take note of what is being said. The Honorable Member for Mazabuka Central, continue. What I, I was saying was that um, for any reconciliation, useful reconciliation, meaningful reconciliation to happen, a problem must be identified. And I was in the process of identifying a problem which I named bigotry, where people do not accommodate views of those whose views they don't agree with. And I said apologies must be rendered to those who the state has wronged. And I gave an example of an individual who was taken into jail for 127 days for having committed no crime. I'm talking about an apology that should come from the head of state to this individual who, was, who they attempted to assassinate in Maondo village. In Honorable, Honorable an individual uh, member who for, had to go in the Honorable bush member, Honorable, to hide in his Take your country. seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Order in the house. 
Holder. Honorable member for Mazabuka Central, you have belabored this point, and now you are beginning to discuss the persona of the President of the Republic. When you make reference to the state, I am fine with that. But when you now start referring to a person in the presidency, I have a problem with that. And I want you to veer off from that and continue with your debate, Honorable Member for Mazabuka Center. Thank you, Madam. Those who wrong others, those who wrong others, those who cause others to be fugitives in their own country, if they are truly interested in dialogue and reconciliation, they must apologize. Because he who says sorry is recruit number one for reconciliation. That is my basic point. If I come to you, Madam Chair, and after offending you, I say I'm very sorry. It is up to you to recruit me for that reconciliation because I've laid myself bare for the wrongs that I've done to yourself. I started by saying things are not right in this country. We have offended each other far too long. We are now in an egg, egg chicken situation where those who are ignorant do not know where the problem stemmed from. Now, if you know you are the root of the problem and now you realize there is need to reconcile, say sorry. Then you become a candidate number one. Then you become the recruit number one for reconciliation to those who have been offended. This is what I meant, Madam Chair, when I said the standards have dropped far too low where people are not understanding the things that they brought in this report, that there's need to reconcile. Now I'm being told, reconcile with who? Go and reconcile with the wind. One day, you will sit on the table with those people that you think are not worthy reconciling. Your boss made it clear he wishes to reconcile. You, his disciples, them, madam, his disciples, are busy contesting what their boss said. This is why I said we should not be pretentious. It gives me skepticism as to whether the person who delivered this particular speech, and you've asked me not to be too personal, really meant what you were saying. If your disciples are varying off direction opposite to where you're going, it means you have no followers. And the president requires to check, do a rain check, and see whether he truly has followers. Because I believed him. I'm, I was seated right here where I am, and I was the closest to the president as he was delivered. I said, in his demeanor, he looked meek, meek. I would like to see that meekness translate on the ground to show that what he intended in that speech for us to reconcile bears fruit, that it gets to fruition. Now, this is the bigotry that I was speaking about, where one is trying to pump sense into the equation, and others are busy back throwing it. Debate through the chair and you have the speech in your hands. Focus. This particular speech to me I'm very skeptical. It was business as usual. Where just a week ago, is it amnesia? The president says there's need to reconcile. And somebody's arguing here that there's no need to reconcile. What kind of people? The standards have dropped. The standards have dropped where people say one thing and they do the other. I've simply said there are many people who have been offended in this country, including those street children that I spoke about. Where there is a government, you can easily forestall values, principles, and morals. This is the, the era, madam, where you have a minister of government Continuing to work as normal when he circulates pornography. I reminded the president here in my writing comment that when you come to talk about morals, do not forget about pornography. It is a fact. In the days of David Kenneth Kaunda, he would have fired that minister instantly as a demonstration of upholding morals, values, and ethics. That's what I'm talking about. The president 
could not convince me that what he was saying in this speech, he would put into practice. Let us walk the talk. There's so much human resource in this country, in PF, so that if you are found on the negative side of morals, ethics, and values, which is, by the way, the best police of humanity. It is a self-regulating mechanism, these morals, because that's why we cannot legislate these things. They, that's the best police. Pulanda, that's what I've come for here. I must tell these people, Madam, Madam Speaker, what is right. And I just gave a definition of what values are. It's a judgmental call of what is important in life. Now, if you don't think that reconciliation is important in life, then maybe you must live in the jungle. You must go and live in the jungle where there's no interaction, where there's no talking. This country requires desperately to stitch itself together, and it will only begin by people internalizing views that are different from theirs. Cannot be a despot and pretend to be meek. You have to walk the talk. Madam, as I finish, the issues that are affecting us in this area of morals, I've said is poverty. We need to deal with poverty. Call it anything. Street children is poverty. Prostitution is poverty. Robbery is theft is poverty. Everything is poverty. That's an area that is apolitical. It is an area that is non-political. If we hold hands with these same people there who are, who are arguing at first, and now they are quiet, we can conquer poverty. You see and now. once we conquer <clears throat> poverty, I enjoy it when they try to challenge me, but, but I'm... I can oh, the Honorable on Member for Mazabuka Central, you are now being quarrelsome. <laughs> Debate. That's the when they hear. This is when they... they Order. They... I have just guided. You debate through the chair. The right is quiet. They are listening to you. As I guided. But now you want to start exchanging words with them. Continue with your debate. As I finish... A leader with their salt, when they see consternation in a nation, they instigate evolution. They start to listen. They start making adjustments. For if you continue to ignore the sentiments that are coming from an oppressed group of people such as ourselves, there is only one thing you will ex expect. If you cannot institute an evolution, there shall definitely be a revolution. And it's that revolution that will make some of you come calling down to people like Hakainde Ichirema to say, I am sorry. You are better off. You are better off saying sorry now when you are in a position of power so that there's no retribution when that time comes. We had people like him who are saying, never, never. The only thing that is constant, madam, in life is change. PF has lived his shelf life. Your time is up.